Hi, this is Suraj Rastam, Senior Engineer and Urban Planner from Dharan Sub-Metropolitan Sub City of this Nepal. I'm here to share our findings on performance of cultural heritage sites in April 25, 2015 Nepal earthquake and its aftershocks as a member of EERI Nepal Recognitions team. In this, uh, in this EERI briefing series of videos, among several presentations, the blue ones are all the presentations related to building performance, while the red one is related to my presentation. I would like to start my presentation from the traditional planning of towns of Kathmandu Valley. Traditionally, Kathmandu Valley was composed of three towns, Kathmandu, Patan, and Bhaktapur. Among the three towns, I would like to take an example of Patan. Traditional Kathmandu Valley towns were planned with orientation to gods and cosmic laws. Image of cosmos was used to build and border the towns. Patan was planned in a Dharma Chakra or the Buddhist wheel of righteous layout as you can see in the picture with its main streets running in two cardinal directions bounded by four tours or mounds at Laganqil, Imadol, Sankhamul and Pulcho meeting somewhere near Swatha area and obviously the central part is Darbar Square or the Royal Palace. There are hierarchies of streets. The main streets run north to south and east to west linking four moons as uh, seen in the previous picture and uh, various market square lies along the way each having a chain of temples. The secondary streets link market squares to the neighborhood squares. Two or more streets join together developing nodes that are developed as square whose social importance increase as they get closer to the Darbar square. However, the funerary route lacked any uh, nodal points like any other routes. The neighborhood squares forms the district of the town. Interestingly, each nodes, districts, and ages have temples and stupas as shown in the picture of Machindra Ba, Nag Ba, Pinche Ba, and the Swatha Naran temple at Swatha node. Next. Uh, in Kathmandu, temples are central to uh, community life because somehow the daily life of the people are, is related to the temples around which the neighborhood is set up. Not only in Kathmandu, every village has its own shrine and temples, though the extent in those villages outside the valley is less as that in valley. A professor from Trivon University, Kathmandu, Mr. Uh, Madhav Gautam, says that Kathmandu is a city for which the cultural sites are part of its skeleton, and if you take them away, the city collapses. So this shows the importance of temples and heritage, cultural heritage sites in Kathmandu Valley. Uh, coming to the next two uh, Nepal's World Heritage Sites, uh, Nepal has two sites, types of heritage listed in UNESCO World Heritage Sites that, are, that is cultural and natural. Natural heritage sites include uh, Chitwan National Park and Sagarmatha National Park, while cultural heritage sites include seven monumental zones of Kathmandu Valley and Lumbini, the birthplace of Buddha, which lies in the southern belt uh, of the country. Among the seven monumental zones of Kathmandu Valley, three are the Darbar squares of uh, Kathmandu, Patan, and Bhaktapur, two are the Hindu temples of Pasupatinath and Changunarayan, and two are the Buddhist stupa of Swambur and Baudhanath. The date in parenthesis shows the year in which these sites were enlisted in UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The next slide uh, shows that uh, there are basically three typologies of the cultural heritage structures as per the construction type. The first one is the temples having uh, one to five diminishing uh, tier symmetric structures with brick masonry and timber elements. The ground floor consists of a sal wood, which is botanically termed as Shoria Robusta, timber framing support uh, system, which supports the wall above it. The timber columns on the base level stand on the base stone with a small pin inserted on the stone base and the top of the timber columns pin goes through the beam as shown in figure 4. The beam has a bracket. The beam supports battens or joists upon which planks are laid. These in turn support the final floor finish. Additional bracing is provided by linking the vertical and horizontal structural components for preventing relative sliding of the floor structure on the walls in the presence of lateral forces. 
and hence it creates a box uh, behavior response. This connection is made using wedges or timber pig that fix the wall plate along the perimeter through the joists that run inside and outside the building. Uh, the second typology is brick masonry structures in lime or mud mortar. These are typical load-bearing uh, masonry structures with no timber frames or non-structural timbers if they have any. In the lower uh, uh, part of the picture, you can see uh, Bimson Tower, also called as Dharara, is a typical unreinforced brick masonry tall tower of nine story, which is 203 feet tall and is built in 1825. The main materials used in the building construction is Bajra, which is a typical Nepali re uh, reinforced material made up of brick dust, lime, black lintels, and caramel. Uh, interestingly, it had no iron as a construction material. It was completely destroyed uh, by this earthquake. Uh, the third typology is the temples made from stone. Uh, Krishna Temple of Patan Darbar Square is the famous stone temple built in 1723. It did not suffer any damage uh, in this earthquake. However, another stone temple called as Vatsala Devi Temple of Bhaktapur Darbar Square, which was built in 1672, was completely destroyed by the earthquake. In terms of architectural pattern, Nepalese temples uh, can be broadly classified into three groups. First group is a tiered temple similar to pagoda style having one roof, two roofs, three roofs, or five roofs with diminishing dimensions as it goes up. There is no four roof temple. It has a uh, white eaves supported by carved wooden struts. And second group is the stupa, which is uh, purely Buddhist in conception, concept and execution. The outstanding uh, feature of stupas is a hemispherical mound topped by a square base supporting a series of 13 circular rings. Narrowing towards the top, these are crowned by parasol. The structure rests on a central wooden post as shown in the picture. And the third group is the Sikhara style, uh, another architectural pattern which has a superstructure composed of a tall cur curvilinear or pyramidal uh, tower whose surface is broken up vertically into five uh, or nine sections. Uh, Nepal mainly uh, Kathmandu Valley suffered uh, huge damage to the cultural heritages. Nearly, according to uh, Department of Arche uh, Archaeology, 750 monuments from all over the country were damaged, with approximately half collapsed. Though the scale is huge, that is less than some uh, media report implies. Out of seven monument zones of Kathmandu Valley, five suffered uh, different levels of damage. Among them, Kathmandu Darbar Square suffered greatly. Patan and Bhaktapur Darbar Square were partially damaged. Swaimbu Monument Zone uh, also suffered heavy damage, though the main shrine was not damaged. And Changu Naren Temple was also partially damaged. Uh, however, there are uh, several iconic temples and monuments that have survived in all these world heritage sites. That's the interesting point. Recently, government of Nepal has conducted uh, post-disaster needs assessment. It is estimated that the total value of disaster effects caused by the earthquakes is $7 billion. Of that amount, $193 million, which is about 2.75% of the total effects, accounts for the effect to cultural heritage. Though in percentage, it seems less, but its indirect effect is huge and would result in a slowdown of the economy as the country relies heavily on tourism. Similarly, the total needs for reconstruction required for cultural heritage sites amounts to uh, 206 million, which is about 3.1% of 6.7 billion total needs for all uh, sectors. Uh, in, uh, in short, we, we can say that Nepal will require substantial uh, external assistance to meet the rehabilitation and reconstruction cost. Uh, this earthquake is quite interesting in terms of damage pattern uh, because uh, the performance of monuments in the earthquake it varies from uh, monuments to monuments and from uh, places to places. Like in some uh, places, it survived in some places, while uh, others, uh, where, which were similar, got collapsed in uh, other places as well. So in the picture, you can see uh, uh, the damage uh, in Patan and Kathmandu Darbar Square before and after the earthquake. In Patan Darbar Square, you can see many temples standing 
still but few temples being collapsed like uh, Char Narayan and Sankar Narayan temple. While in Kathmandu there were square, uh, many temples like uh, Kastamanda, Mazudega, uh, Narayan Vishnu temples, Trilokyamon temple and Chashin Dega were completely damaged. So uh, uh, both of the uh, uh, both of the Darwar squares, uh, the damage pattern was quite different. Uh, and uh, in uh, the Bhaktapur Darwar square, Chaslin Mandap, uh, which was seismically strengthened, uh, it was undamaged. Uh, most in interesting part uh, was in Swaimbu, where uh, you can see two similar uh, temples: Pratapur Temple and Anantapur Temple. Uh, Pratapur temple of Swaimbu uh, suffered minor damage in the plinth because the maintenance of this temple was done to the superstructure part uh, after being damaged partly by fire in 2003 and by lightning in 2011. So the superstructure part was uh, uh, quite uh, maintained and it did not uh, got uh, uh, so much damage but the uh, plinth was damaged. However, the similar uh, temple, Anantapur temple, which was just opposite of it, it caused uh, almost all of its uh, superstructure collapsed uh, because uh, we came to know that it did not receive any maintenance from a uh, long time. So the performance of monuments uh, quite varied from uh, places to places and from monuments to monuments. Uh, it is seen that brick masonry with timber frame structures performed uh, better than massive uh, brick masonry structures in lime or mud mortar. You can see a temple in Kathmandu Darbar Square uh, in the picture below where the temple is standing still though the brick masonry walls have fallen out. It is mainly because the temple stands on the timber frame structures. Similarly, most of the tall monuments on narrow bases collapsed as compared to uh, low rise masonry monuments. This is because this earthquake uh, being low amplitude ground motion in the short period range is less damaging to low rise masonry buildings. The ground motion results in compression and shear failure of masonry in corners and walls at the base, thus narrowing the base. It further results in tipping over the structure and leading to collapse. In this picture, you can see many low-rise temples of Kathmandu Darbar Square which survived well, while the tall temples nearby in the Kathmandu Darbar Square got collapsed. Uh, we observed uh, in our recognitions team that uh, top level of most of the multi-tier temples got collapsed, though the lower portion was all right. In the picture, you can see the top tier of Patan's Talezu temple. Uh, it keeled over and it, uh, balanced uh, and is balanced precariously on top of the temple, as you can see. If it had fallen, the heavily embellished piece would have destroyed half of the building. Similarly, the top level of Joy Bhageshwari temple of Gausala Kathmandu has also toppled down. And similarly, the famous nine-story palace Basantapur Tower of Kathmandu Darbar Square also lost top two floors in the earthquake. Rare but few examples of pounding effect were also observed in our uh, visit. The picture uh, here shows the inside of palace premises near Nasal Chok in Kathmandu Darbar Square, where the hammering effect of Gaddi Baitak, the neoclassical European style building, and the roofs of the nine-story Basantapur Tower is clearly seen. Similarly, on the other picture, uh, you can see the block housing Kirtipur Tower of Lohan Chok got pounded with the block housing Basantipur Tower of Nasal Chok, as can be seen in the second picture. Now, let's uh, see some of the good uh, performing examples as well. Most of the restored monuments performed well, uh, though some suffered damages. The 55 uh, windowed uh, palace in Bhaktapur Darbar Square, as you can see, uh, was uh, restored earlier and it uh, did not, uh, it performed very well, it did not got collapsed. Similarly, the timbers of Bhimsen uh, Temple in Patan Darbar Square was also repaired and uh, only slight damage was seen there, however, the structure was intact. They performed well in this earthquake uh, and there are several other examples of restored monuments uh, which performed very well in this earthquake. The foundations of the temples uh, have rarely been studied in depth because conservation walks in Nepal are usually done plinth upwards. Uh, whatever may be the foundation, it is seen that most of the tier temples with wide plinth base performed well despite uh, some examples of bad performances as well. Nathapol, the famous five-tier temple of Taumadi Square of Bhaktapur, built in 1702, has been standing intact for 312 years, surviving the great earthquakes of 1833, 1934, and 2015. 
in rest it rests on a base of uh, five levels similarly Talizu Bhawani a temple of Kathmandu Darva square built in 1564 which has a wide plinth base survived the quake as well although engineering computations are yet to be undertaken one could guess here that provision of massive plinth does improve response not only against wave amplification but also in avoiding resonance with ground as per Professor Tiwari of Institute of Engineering. Despite this good example, there are a few other multi-tiered temples like Mazudega Temple of Kathmandu Darbar Square, uh, which was built in 1690, having white plinth base, it got collapsed. The reason could be attributed to other factors as well. Uh, Buddhist stupas uh, performed relatively well, perhaps due to their dome shape. There were small cracks in the main dome, and 9th, 10th, and 11th steps were displaced slightly. The displacement was small in April 12th earthquake, but it got large in May 25th earthquake. The restoration is almost complete now. Similarly, many monuments in Swaimbu Monument John, uh, which were built on pagoda and Sikhara styles, got collapsed, uh, fully collapsed or partially damaged, but the main stupa of Swaimbu was not damaged. One can see small, other small or big stupas in Kathmandu Valley where it can be seen that some damages can be seen on the top step portion, but the main dome of the stupa has remained intact. Pasupatinath temple, uh, which was built at the end of 17th century, though its existing, uh, existence dates back to 480, it is a good example of temples that survived the earthquake. The temple is a two-tiered, which is not very tall, so it may have been less affected by long period ground motion. Another reason of its good performance is its timber frame structure, which is more flexible in ground motion. Nails at that time were considered inauspicious and thought to invite bad omen, and so wooden wages were used to connect any two parts. This laid the interlocking system of pillars to be more flexible. The two-tier temple had a lighter weight at the top and heavier at the bottom. Most structures that easily collapse off have heavy roofs at the top. Pasupati Nath is the uh, holiest temple among the Hindus. So uh, due to its importance, focus and revenue generation capacity, it has been renovated a couple of times in the recent past. The renovation is another main reason for its uh, good performance. But perhaps a more scientific reason that explains laser damage is its copper and golden roofs. The bottom roof is wide enough to cover the base, thus preventing rain and sunlight from making direct impact on wooden structures of the temple frames. Uh, therefore minimizing the deterioration of the temple over the years. However, one could argue, argue that uh, other similar temples got flattened by the same earthquake. This was uh, mainly raised by many scholars as well. However, we can say that this may be due to other, uh, other controlling reasons as well. Another main reason for failure uh, is the quality of materials and construction. Some of the brick quality, especially in the new classical building of Gaddi Baitat, in Kathmandu Darva Square is not so good comparatively to other heritage buildings as you can see in the picture as well. So the outer layer of the walls has come out as you can see uh, in the first picture. Similarly poor maintenance and deterioration is repeatedly reported as the main cause of failure. We can see uh, some rotted timber that has been taken out from a collapsed temple of Kathmandu Darva Square. In some cases loose capitals or the dowel of half inch of timber column in stone or the loose connection of timber column with beam reported to be the cause of damage. But we doubt whether this is only the reason. There might be reasons like inadequate seismic features, which could be the major cause of failure or the foundation failure. However, more detailed study has to be done uh, in this aspect. Brick masonry walls are the main road bearing walls in most of the temples and palaces. Thus, uh, the failure of wall could trigger the failure of the whole structure. Wall structure of the temples and palaces consists of three layers, as you can see in the picture. The outer face of wall is made of fired clay brick with smooth finishing, which is called as dachi apa in uh, local uh, language. And inner face is made of sun-dried bricks called as kachi apa. So outer and inner face layers are not well connected with the middle core wall. Normally the middle core uh, is filled with rubble stone, brick bats, and mud which made the uh, wall very poor to withstand the heavy load from the main structure. In many temples, yellow color clay mortar, mud mortar, and more rarely lime surki mortar is used, which could not be seen from outside. Though the thickness of the walls range from 50 centimeter to 75 centimeter, but due to the poor bond between the outer and inner face layers, failures like delamination and bulging of the stiffer uh, face brick shell could be the cause of failure of the walls as is seen typically in wider masonry walls. 
since uh, most of the ground floor have uh, open space to allow people to walk uh, around the temple, soft story effect could uh, be another reason of collapse of these temples. Uh, ease of the building is also another main reason of failure. For example, Kastamandu uh, in Kathmandu Darwa Square, from where the name of Kathmandu was derived, was built in the early 16th century from uh, just a wood of a single tree. It is said that most of the timbers were from that period. The earthquake caused several damage to the temple and its ultimate collapse. Similarly, Char Narayan Temple, also called as Jagan Narayan Temple, is perhaps the oldest temple in pa Patandarva Square built in 1565, which was also completely collapsed in this earthquake. The fact is that uh, either weaken or strengthen the earthquake waves and hence its strength is also important to determine before making any conclusions on why some structures fell and some survived. Topography effect could be one of them. Uh, you can see hilltop effect was clearly seen in Swembu, which lies in the hill crest, where the uh, waves can easily amplify. Geological conditions on which the temple stands, like condition of water table, uh, thickness of lake sediment, and uh, proximity of bedrock to the surface, is also the major controlling factor, uh, the study of which uh, is not done to the extent it should be at present. Most of the temples of Taumadi Square in Bhaktapur, including Nathapol, suffered very less damage not only in this earthquake, but in previous earthquakes as well. This may be due to the soil nature. Um, however, detailed study needs to be uh, needs to verify this fact. Uh, this is crucial, uh, the issues in rebuilding. Now, uh, Nepal is rebuilding its heritage sites. The key question arises whether to rebuild with traditional techniques and materials or include some form of enhancement. Uh, Professor Tiwari from Institute of Engineering, including several other conservation architects, argue that today's failure is a failure of maintenance. It is not a failure of technology or material. But before coming to any conclusion, detailed study and careful analysis of these traditional techniques as compared to the performance uh, in these earthquake needs to be done. There, there is no doubt that the usefulness of local technology should not be devaluated, but its effectiveness should be verified. These temples do not have uh, do have quite a few features that uh, have potential to reduce the impact of earthquakes, but there is always a place of improvement. These local technologies should be enhanced in the light of engineering. At this point, thinking about including some form of enhancement should not be an objectionable idea. Introducing modern retrofitting techniques to support the structure, but hiding it to the viewers by covering it with local traditional materials could be a midway between a conservation architect and a modern structural engineer. There could be other ideas where modern engineering and traditional techniques meet each other. So I hereby leave this meeting point to the scholars of the world to explore uh, the issues. Uh, the positive side of rebuilding is that there are plenty of uh, available artists and masons working in this field. From Mulla Kings, uh, the system of caste was introduced as per their profession. The planning of towns was also done in such a way that people having same profession were, uh, were kept in the same neighborhood. For example, Silpur Kars, which is one of the caste of Newars, living in Ikhalaku of Patan, have ancestral profession of wood carving. Similarly, there are separate neighborhoods of people working in metals, stones, etc. And the most interesting thing is that they are still continuing their, their ancestral profession. The second positive aspect of rebuilding is the community-based management for the heritage sites. Uh, Guti is a traditional community organization system that still binds Nepalese society. It is a community-based trust which determine activities to preserve culture and tradition. So these intangible assets could be used uh, positively in the rebuilding process of these uh, cultural heritage sites. On the contrary, uh, there are other issues in rebuilding which needs to be improved. First, the Department of Archaeology, uh, the only sole government agency to look after the archaeological sites, have very less staff size to manage the scale of damage. Apart from few exceptions, uh, neither the department nor any other agencies have proper documentation and record of art and artifacts, including architectural and structural drawings of monuments. So to rebuild with authentic authenticity is uh, quite a challenge. Another issue of rebuilding is to reach consensus on plans on how to rebuild. Department of Archaeology is seeking experts' advice, but how to reach consensus is a problem because there is no specific norms and standards except few work procedures and integrated management plan. Funding issues is also another issue of rebuilding for a country like Nepal. But apparently, uh, foreign donors and agencies place more than uh, $3 billion in aid 
in a donor conference held in Kathmandu on uh, June 25, 2015, which is more than what is actually needed. The government of Nepal has given priority for rebuilding in the budget of new fiscal year as well. So funding should not be a problem until and unless its proper utilization is ensured. Technological issues are also another issue in rebuilding of cultural heritage sites. Heavy roofs of palaces inside the courtyard of palaces need to be uplifted. The challenge is to remove it, make the repairs, and then put it back. A crane can't be brought into the area, so a helicopter has to be brought to lift it off and then put it back on. This was said by Mr. Rohit Ranjitkar, a conservation architect who is country director of the non-profit Kathmandu Valley Preservation Trust and his friend Dilinda Srist, a past president of the Patan Tourism Development Organization. In some cases, some heritage buildings need to be lifted up as well. There is no technology available at present in Nepal to do so. So the technical, uh, technological issues is also, uh, is also the major issue while uh, talking about the rebuilding of cultural heritage sites. Uh, based on our study, we have few uh, recommendations. Uh, first, Department of Archaeology uh, should conduct pilot studies and the learning from these pilot studies should be incorporated to the last program instead of directly going to the last program as they are uh, currently doing right now. Secondly, uh, repair guidelines, norms and uh, standards need to be uh, developed considering the effect of earthquake. Likewise, traditional material testing is warranted, warranted to ensure uh, quality rebuilding. and. Uh, uh, mostly and uh, most importantly, some research studies need to be done to protect these heritage sites from future earthquakes. For example, strong uh, motion instruments need to be installed in major heritage sites that would help improve understanding the behavior of the structures in the earthquake. Uh, analytical modeling and sectable testing of repair and retrofit solutions is recommended. And uh, more studies need to be done on the underlying reason of good performance and bad performance of the monuments. Geological study mainly in Pasupatinath and Nathapol areas uh, needs to be done to verify the good performance of these temples with respect to the soil nature. Foundations of tiered temples, especially those having wide plinth base, needs to be studied in detail. These studies are necessary to verify the effectiveness of traditional technology and material. Uh, these are uh, the uh, references that I took while doing my study and if you need more information on reports, data and photos, please visit EERI's uh, virtual clearinghouse website. At this point, I would like to thank my virtual team collaborator Camila Favoretti who uploaded my photos to the EERI map. And lastly, uh, I would like to thank EERI and SIT EERI LFE team members and my own institution, the Rans of Metropolitan City Office, for their respective support. And my special thanks uh, go to Professor Dr. Tiwari and Professor Maske uh, from Institute of Engineering, Pulso Campus, for sharing their views. Likewise, I would like to thank uh, Ram Gopal Sres from Bhaktapur Municipality, Rohit Ranjitkar from Kathmandu Valley Preservation Trust, and Devinda Bhattrai from Department of Archaeology, Amrit Man Buddhacharya from Swambu Management and Conservation Committee for guiding the tour to the damaged sites. And last but not the least, I would like to thank Brett Lizundia for reviewing the uh, content and uh, Edi uh, also for reviewing the content. Thank you.